The ground beneath Northern California rarely announces its intentions clearly. It shifts, strains, and stores energy in silence for years, sometimes decades, before releasing it in a way that feels sudden to those above. On January 13, 2026, that quiet tension made itself known near the town of Willits. A magnitude 4.4 earthquake struck roughly nine kilometers, or about six miles, east-southeast of the community, followed less than two hours later by a magnitude 3.8 event, about 11 kilometers, or seven miles, away. In total, 14 earthquakes rippled through the crust in quick succession. Was this simply background noise along a restless plate boundary, or did it mark a meaningful change in how one of California's lesser-known but critically important faults is behaving? And if this fault is moving now, what does that say about the stress locked into the broader northern San Andreas system? The earthquakes originated along the Marcama Fault, a right lateral strike slip structure that forms a key branch of the northern San Andreas Fault network. While the San Andreas itself tends to dominate public awareness, it does not carry the entire burden of plate motion. In Northern California, the relative movement between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate is distributed across several parallel faults. The Makama Fault runs roughly north to northwest, passing east of Willits and west of Ukiah, cutting quietly through forested hills, river valleys, and rural communities. It is not a secondary or inactive structure. It is an active, well-mapped fault capable of producing moderate earthquakes and accommodating a significant share of regional plate motion. At the depths recorded for the January 13th events, roughly eight and a half kilometers or about five miles beneath the surface, rocks behave in a brittle manner. Stress accumulates elastically as the Pacific plate pushes northwestward at an average rate of nearly 50 millimetres, or about two inches, per year relative to North America. Along the Marcama Fault, only a portion of this motion is released through slow surface creep. Measurements in and around Willits show the ground shifting laterally by several millimetres per year, enough over decades to visibly offset curbs, sidewalks and fence lines. Yet this creep does not fully accommodate the tectonic load. The remaining strain accumulates at depth, where fault surfaces can lock together until friction is overcome. The magnitude 4.4 earthquake represented a sudden release of that stored elastic energy along a relatively small patch of the fault. In physical terms, the fault slipped horizontally by perhaps only a few centimetres, no more than a few inches. That small displacement, occurring rapidly, sent seismic waves upward and outward, producing shaking felt across the Willits area. The subsequent magnitude, 3.8 earthquake, and the smaller events that followed were not separate failures, but adjustments within the surrounding stressed rock. Each aftershock marked a redistribution of stress as the crust attempted to settle into a new equilibrium. The clustering of 14 earthquakes is consistent with how strike-slip faults behave when a locked segment partially fails. Rather than a single clean rupture, the fault often breaks in a patchwork fashion. One area slips, transferring stress to adjacent sections which then respond with smaller events. This is especially common on faults that alternate between creeping and locked behavior, as the Markama does. In such systems, creeping sections can load stress onto locked patches, increasing the likelihood of episodic earthquakes. The Markama fault does not exist in isolation. To the east lies the Bartlett Springs fault, another right lateral strike slip structure that parallels the Markama, 
and accommodates part of the same plate motion. Farther west, the main trace of the San Andreas Fault continues offshore and onshore along the coast. These faults form a distributed shear zone rather than a single fracture. Stress is constantly transferred between them through a process known as elastic interaction. When one fault slips, even slightly, it can increase or decrease stress on neighbouring faults by small amounts. In the case of the January sequence, the stress changes were modest and localised, insufficient to trigger activity on the Bartlett Springs or San Andreas faults, but they are part of the same interconnected system. Historically, this region has experienced far more powerful earthquakes than those recorded in 2026. On April 15, 1898, a magnitude 6.7 earthquake struck south of Mendocino, producing strong shaking across Northern California. That event, likely associated with faults in the same tectonic system, generated ground cracking, landslides and structural damage in an era before seismic building codes. Even larger was the April 18, 1906 earthquake, when a rupture extending hundreds of kilometres along the San Andreas Fault reshaped the landscape and permanently altered scientific understanding of earthquakes. Compared to those events, the Willits sequence released only a tiny fraction of the accumulated tectonic energy. Yet the importance of the recent earthquakes lies not in their size, but in their timing and location. The Makama Fault has long been recognised as capable of producing magnitude 6 to 7 earthquakes based on geological offsets preserved in the landscape. Trenches dug across the fault reveal layers of sediment displaced by several metres, evidence of large prehistoric ruptures that occurred long before written records. Those findings demonstrate that the fault alternates between long periods of strain accumulation and episodic release. The January sequence shows that parts of the fault remain active at depth and capable of sudden motion. From a mechanical perspective, the earthquakes illustrate the fundamental physics of strike-slip faulting. Sheer stress builds as tectonic plates attempt to slide past one another. Friction resists this motion until stress exceeds the strength of the fault interface. Once failure occurs, stored elastic energy is converted into seismic waves, heat and permanent deformation. The size of an earthquake reflects the area of the fault that slips and the amount of displacement. In this case, the slipping area was small, producing moderate shaking without widespread damage. Importantly, the sequence does not imply that a larger earthquake is imminent. Small earthquakes do not reliably forecast large ones. In some cases, they slightly reduce stress on the portion of the fault that slipped. In other areas, stress remains unchanged or even increases marginally. Earthquake occurrence remains governed by long-term tectonic loading rather than short-term sequences like this one. For the Makama Fault, the long-term hazard remains tied to centuries of accumulated motion, not a single day of activity. What these earthquakes do provide is a reminder that Northern California's seismic hazard is not confined to the most famous faults. The Makama Fault is actively accommodating plate motion today, quietly reshaping the crust beneath towns that may feel far removed from California's seismic reputation. Each small rupture refines scientific models, improves hazard assessments, and deepens understanding of how complex fault networks share the work of plate tectonics. In the end, the January 13th sequence was not a warning shot, but a data-rich glimpse into an ongoing process. The Makama Fault moved because it must move. The Pacific Plate continues its steady push, the crust 
continues to strain, and energy continues to accumulate and release in increments both small and large. For scientists and observers alike, the message is neither alarmist nor dismissive. It is simply this. The Earth beneath Northern California is active, interconnected, and always in motion, even when its movements are measured in centimetres rather than metres. If this analysis helped clarify how active fault systems behave, please like the video, share it with others interested in Earth science, subscribe for continued evidence-based coverage, and tap the hype icon. These actions increase visibility and allow scientifically accurate content to reach a wider audience.